Hi, it's Mr. Anderson. In this video, we're going to talk about thinking in scale, level one, describing scale. First thing you want to do when you're ever describing relative scale is you identify the system that we're going to investigate. We'll do that in just a minute. But we're going to be talking about one definition of scale, which is basically the extent of something or the size of something. So I'm going to put scale up here. The object I've created that really discusses scale is going to be this pyramid, because if you look at the pyramid, on one side it's very small and on the other side it's very large. So that is an increasing size scale. We could also think about temperature from very cold to very warm or very soft to very loud or very slow to very fast. And so always when you're thinking about relative scale, just remember that object. So by the end of watching this video, you should be able to identify relative scale in a book like Goldilocks and the Three Bears or objects you might see in the sky. I'm going to show you my thinking around relative scale with these three objects, ice, metal, and butter, and then you'll have a chance to show me your thinking around this three gear machine. So let me get the objects out and then we'll start talking about scale. Okay, when you're talking about scale, the first thing you want to do is define the scale that we're actually investigating. So I've defined the scale as these three objects, the ice, the metal, and the butter. Uh, let's look at them a little bit more carefully. Um, the ice is relatively large. It's also really cold. I can feel that. If we look at the metal, it's smaller than the ice, but larger than the butter. Um, and there's some other properties. You can see that the metal has these different sides on it. We can see that the butter is actually starting to stick to the bottom of the bowl. So as we investigate this, we want to make sure that we describe the objects that we're actually investigating. So the objects I'm going to investigate are the ice, the metal, and the butter. The next thing we should think about is what scale am I going to start thinking in? And so the one that jumps out right, to, right away is size. And so we're going to investigate these objects and we're going to be looking at the size scale. So if you're ever talking about scale, you want to define what type of a scale we're talking about. In this case, we're talking about the size. So if I were to put down the different scale of these three objects, So these three objects vary from the very small, which is going to be butter, to the very large, which is going to be ice. So that's a type of size scale. Now we might look for a different type of scale. Um, something that jumped out to me right when I was uh, holding them was temperature. So temperature is another type of scale. If I were to define the temperatures that I felt, So the temperatures I felt in the ice was very cold, uh, the metal is cool, and then the butter is the warmest. And so we could say there is a scale going from the very cold ice all the way to the very warm, which is going to be butter. What's another type of scale? Well, if I were to watch these for a minute, I would see that the ice, and I can already see that, is starting to melt. So there's water in the bottom of this bowl. Um, I would say the butter is not melting, but I know that it's going to melt over time and the metal's not changing at all. And so what I'm really looking at is a scale of change. Now, when you're looking at scale, a quick thing you can do is just read from what we're studying to the word scale and see if it makes sense. So sky, size scale makes sense, temperature scale makes sense, but change scale doesn't really make sense. And so when I'm watching something change, I really have to watch it change over time. And so a better way to think about this scale would be the speed of change. So how fast is it changing? over time. And so let me write some relative speed of change scales. So I filled in fast for ice because it's melt quickly. Uh, butter might eventually melt over days. And now I'm thinking about the metal. 
So the metal, I don't see this changing at all, but I imagine if I were just leave it here and come back in, say, a million years, it's going to change in some way. So I could just speculate that the speed of change is going to be very, very slow. And so what I've done so far is I've really just looked at the relative scale. We're looking at the relative size scale, temperature scale, and then speed of change. Now one thing you should be thinking as we go through this is these are just relative. I'm not measuring anything. And that's because we'll talk about quantity in the next video. Um, so I've shown you my thinking around relative scale in these three objects. So I'm going to take a minute to just clean this off and then I'm going to give you a different object and you're going to try to do the same thing. All right, I showed you my thinking with those three objects and now I've got a new system. Let me show you how this one works. We've got some gears. And so what I'm going to do is first define the system. So in this uh, investigation, our system is going to be this three gear machine. Um, what I'd love to have you do is now show me your thinking around relative scale um, using the three gears in this three gear machine. So pause the video. Um, there's some thinking slides down below this video that you could use or you could just write it out on a sheet of paper. Pause the video, show me your relative scale with objects in this system, and then I'll show you my thinking. Okay, the first thing I would do is I would define what are the objects that I'm going to investigate. And then the next thing I have to decide is what is the feature of this uh, system that I, I'm interested in? What is some uh, type of scale that seems interesting? And I'm going to go with size scale. So in this system, I'm going to talk about relative size scale in these three objects. So let me describe those scales. So the scale uh, changes from the gray gear, which is the largest in size, all the way down to the smaller gears, and these both are small. The next thing I may be interested in is, we haven't talked about this, but let's talk about so I'm going to talk about brightness as a sense of scale. So which of these really jumps out to me is going to be the orange. So the orange is very bright. And if I talk about the gray, the gray is dim. And so lots of times when you're looking at relative scale, deciding what's, what's, what's the extent of brightness from dim to bright. And then I could just say blue to me looks bright. So the final thing that I'm going to do is let's look at how this changes. And so I'm going to use the gear for a second. And sometimes you really have to carefully look at a system to start to see other senses of scale. And one thing, I don't know if you're picking up on this in the video, is that the gray gear, since it's bigger, seems to be going slower than the other two. And so let me describe that. So what I'm looking at is their scale when it comes to the speed of rotation. So one thing I noticed is that the gray gear, even though it's larger when it comes to size scale, actually is slower when it comes to the speed of rotation and small gears are faster. And so I've showed you my thinking when it comes to the gear. What I've done is I've put a couple of other ones in the thinking slides down below. There's one on Goldilocks and the three bears. What are the objects in the bear's house? And then um, objects you would find in the sky. So when you're looking at relative scale, the first thing you want to do is define the system. Then thinking about what type of a scale I'm going to look at. Is it size, brightness, temperature? And then start comparing those. It's going to tell us more about the phenomena. So that's scale. It's level one relative scale. And I hope that's helpful.